Welcome, everyone. Um, this is our talk, Metamorphosis, when Kafka meets Camel. Talking here today, we have Jakub Scholz, who is a principal software engineer at the Red Hat Messaging Team, and myself, Otavi Piski, who works as a senior software engineer on the Red Hat Fuse team. On the agenda today, we will discuss a little bit about the challenges of uh, application integration. We will cover the basics of the project that we want to introduce you. We will finish with some live demos and cl closing comments. So, uh, as application developers, one of the challenges that we always have is to integrate systems. We continue to have to make our systems talk to other systems and talk to the external world. This is a challenge that uh, keeps evolving. Uh, and with the introduction of uh, tools such as OpenShift, Kubernetes, Kafka, there are a new set of functionality that we can use to simplify the job of uh, integration. And this is what we are going to cover today. So, what is Apache Camel? Uh, Apache Camel defines itself as the Swiss knife of integration. It is one of the largest and most active Apache projects. It's uh, widely used uh, all around the world to support multiple products uh, and projects. Uh, Camel is an open source integration framework that is very flexible, supports multiple data formats, protocols, products, and tooling. Uh, developers using Camel can create routes that uh, implement enterprise integration patterns to uh, interconnect systems and define mechanisms that allow them to define rules that can be used to filter, transform, or process exchanges that are going from one system to another or multiple systems. <coughs> Those enterprise integration patterns, such as the content-based router, splitter, aggregator, they can be used to solve problems such as how do we move data from system A to system B or C based on the contents of uh, the data being transported? Or how can I combine multiple pieces of data and send it as one to a REST API? To interconnect uh, to these systems, Camel uses what it calls components. Components are the primary extension points that allow Camel to talk to external systems. Camel has more than 300 components supporting uh, multiple products, protocols. For example, Camel has components to talk to Salesforce, to talk to AWS S3, AWS SQS, and so on. Um, as well as uh, pr uh, protocols. For example, uh, AMQP, OpenWire, uh, HTTP, FTP, and so on. So, uh, now that I gave you uh, an overview of what Camo is, uh, I would like to present a quick demo that shows how data can be, uh, how Camo can be used to transport data from a JMS broker to a Kafka broker. This is not a live demo. It is something I recorded. So let me launch it. So, uh, Camel has uh, multiple domain-specific languages that can be used to create uh, these routes that uh, do the work of moving data from one point to another. This is a very simple example that I wanted to show to show you how Camel can be used for that. Uh, it is 
It is a simple example that contains basically two classes and uh, <clears throat> the work doing here is rather simple. We have, for example, the system basically uh, reading some parameters from the environment to know from where to read the data from and to where to send the data to. After we read those, those, those parameters, <coughs> we use those to instantiate the GMS to Kafka halt, which is what actually configures the halting on camel uh, to, to set up uh, this GMS to, Ka to Kafka uh, exchange. After this is created, then we have the <coughs> Uh, this is passed to the camel main runtime, which is then configured uh, via the halt. Uh, <clears throat> the important part on the halt configuration is, is it is on this configure method. Uh, basically, it is doing three things here. First of all, it is configuring uh, the SJMS components, passing the information for what is the broker that is going to be accessed and what is the uh, <coughs> uh, sorry, what is the address of the component? Let me just go back a little bit. And what is the, what is the address of the broker? Then followed by a formatting of the URL used to configure the house and then the actual configuration of the house on that uh, from from two, right? Now, <clears throat> once with this uh, up and running, then we can actually launch an environment running this application with a mock uh, setup to simulate data flowing from this GMS broker to the uh, Kafka broker. On this example here, um, I have an environment that is set up using Docker Compose, which is going to bring up uh, GMS Broker, this integration tooling, and the, the Kafka environment with Kafka and Zookeeper, plus one uh, tooling uh, that will simply read from the Kafka and display it on the screen. It takes a little while to get started. And this show uh, the halt that was configured. If you are using some, if you are having the configuration outside on a properties file, for example, this is what you would have configured there. Uh, we have the usage of two camel components here, the simple GMS2 and the Kafka component. They are used for executing this interconnection between those systems. With this up and running, we can go and access the management console of our GMS broker to insert a message and simply simulate some traffic flowing uh, to the GMS broker. We have it uh, configured here, uh, this uh, queue, called demo queue, which is the source point for this uh, exchange. Here we are adding some data to simulate a message and send it. So, done. Basically what is happening here is that Camo is uh, reading the message from the GMS broker and executing the, the halt to Kafka which is then read by that uh, uh, custom client. Now, this is nothing overly complex and probably many people here already know it and the idea was to show what was the steps and what was the process in order to configure an integration solution based on camera. Uh, naturally, if you were planning to run this as a support for a product or you know, to, to run it on your customers, there are many other qualities that you would need to take into consideration for that. Security, scalability, reliability, and so many other things. And although Camel has uh, awesome support for that, these are all things that you would need to take into consideration and add it to, the, to your application. 
uh, if you are a Kafka shop and if your ex expertise relies more on the Kafka side, you may not have uh, the experience or may not be comfortable with adding those features. And this is what we will uh, leverage further on the subsequent slides. Right, so uh, that was a great introduction to Camel. Now uh, we will do a quick introduction to uh, Kafka itself. How many of you heard about Apache Kafka? And I hope all hands will be up. <laughs> How many of you actually used it or are using it? Right, that's not so many. So uh, a lot of people know Kafka for its uh, messaging broker or streaming platform and so on. Uh, and uh, they don't realize that Kafka is more than just a broker. It's more an ecosystem than the broker itself. The broker is, of course, at the center of it, but there are the different consumer, producer, and streaming APIs. There's the Mirror Maker, and today Mirror Maker 2 as well. Uh, there's a lot of third-party integrations. If you use Spark uh, or different frameworks, a lot of them have uh, Kafka support built directly into them. And, uh, one of the components which are part of this ecosystem is uh, Kafka Connect. How many of you know or used Kafka Connect? Right, that's significantly less hands than uh, what we had for Kafka itself. So uh, Kafka Connect is really an integration framework which is part of the Apache Kafka project. And the idea really is that uh, you have some external system, you use the Kafka Connect to get the data from the external system into your Kafka broker, and then uh, you can do something with them, of course. And then you use again Kafka Connect to dump the data to some external system again. And uh, the Kafka Connect framework is using uh, something called connectors, which are basically plugins which do the actual integration. So it's really just a framework where you plug your own connectors or uh, connectors which you downloaded, which someone else created, and then you use them. And uh, so you can really go and write your own connector. It's really quite easy. You basically just implement uh, two interfaces in some Java classes. And a lot of people are asking, uh, does it really make sense to write your own connector when you can write your own kind of consumer producer and so on? And uh, the advantage of Kafka Connect is that it does some things for you. So A, it's uh, distributed and scalable by default. And I will talk later a bit more about how it scales and distributes. Uh, it has automatic offset management, so you don't need to care as much about things like uh, reliability and uh, commits and so on as you would uh, if you write the application really using the consumer or producer API. Uh, it has uh, built-in support for some simple transformations when you need to transform the messages. And uh, it kind of works very well to transition between the things like streaming and batch processing and so on. And uh, so here are some key Kafka concepts which uh, would be useful later when we are showing the demos. So we already talked about the connectors. The connectors are always either sync connectors or source connectors. So uh, basically on this picture, the source connectors are used as a source of data for Kafka. The sync connectors are used to dump the data somewhere else. And uh, these are always separate connectors, so if you just want to ingest the data from something into Kafka, you don't need to write both sync and source, you can write just one of them. And then the connector itself, it's kind of a bit of a virtual entity, and it has something called tasks, which are again basically always either sync or source tasks, and these tasks are what's actually doing the integration itself. And then uh, two more things to mention, is the key value converters and the transformers. So the transformer is what does the transformation when you use it. And the key value converters, it's what tries to convert the data which you are either ingesting into Kafka or sending out of Kafka somewhere to kind of convert them between the different systems and make sure that in Kafka, they are usable as a regular Kafka messages. In the external system, they are usable with whatever is na native uh, there. And then, uh, the Kafka Connect can really run in two different modes. One of them is the standalone mode, where we have always kind of a single worker, 
and uh, there's some configuration file locally which the work reads, uh, creates the connector and uh, stores the offset of the Kafka messages which it processed locally and so on. And uh, it's useful, for example, if you have some application running on some VM, you want to uh, the application to read some data from the file, but you don't have the data in a file, you have them instead in some topic in Kafka. So what this uh, standalone connect can, for example, do, you can kind of run it on the same VM, it can read the messages from Kafka and kind of simply dump them into a file and then the application can read them from a file. So that's kind of one of the examples where the standalone connect can be quite useful. In the OpenSheet or Kubernetes world, you can, for example, imagine this as a sidecar pattern uh, with multiple containers in the same pod. Then kind of the bit more interesting mode is the distributed mode where we really have uh, multiple workers uh, running as part of the Kafka Connect cluster. One of them is always the leader and they synchronize through the Kafka broker itself so you don't need to have any additional software to do the leader election synchronization and so on. And uh, they store everything inside the Kafka broker itself so the offset, the uh, configuration and so on. So the workers themselves, they are basically stateless. And the way it works is uh, you have here, for example, a cluster with three workers, and when you deploy the connector, the connector has uh, one or more tasks, and the tasks are always scheduled into the different workers. So you can see here the connector one has uh, just one task running here, the connector two has two tasks, uh, or three tasks actually, the connector three has two tasks, and so on. And when one of these would uh, die, it can uh, reschedule somewhere else and continue working somewhere else. So uh, this was especially interesting uh, in the time before everyone was using Kubernetes and OpenShift. To some extent today it's a bit competing with that because a lot of this functionality can be easily built even without uh, Kafka Connect. You can just have pods which scale, they restart and so on. But uh, it's still quite useful. And in the last demo at the end I will actually show how you can use it on uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift as well. Okay, so uh, what happens when you mix these two super flexible, super powerful projects, right? Uh, so let's meet the Camel Kafka Connector. Uh, the Camel Kafka Connector is a Kafka Connector that was built on top of Apache Camel. We at Red Hat, we started it as a proof of concept to evaluate the feasibility of uh, whether this would work. Uh, and after all successful uh, proof of concept, uh, we donated the code to the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, and it became a sub-project of the Apache Camel. Uh, the idea is that it makes it possible to reuse the camel components in a very simple way. Uh, in general, uh, basically what you need to do is configure a properties file, feed it into the Kafka, uh, connect runtime, and that's it. As I said, uh, camel su has support for more than 300 components. Uh, initially, for the Kafka connect, we are working on a focus, uh, we are focusing on a selected list of 11 components. Uh, however, it's uh, very likely that many of the components from Camel already work out of the box. However, uh, it is necessary for us to ensure that some tests are executed and there is some you know, quality assurance and that's why we are selecting uh, these 11 components initially. Uh, as a project, uh, as I said, it was recently donated uh, to the Apache uh, Software Foundation. Uh, it was well received by the community. The project has already, is already receiving some, some, some contributions. Uh, and we are initially working towards a stable release. We, are, we have been working uh, through our issues and to do to make sure that we the project has all the flexibility and you know uh, 
quality assurances that would be expected for something that is available through the Apache uh, community. And now, I would like to show you a demonstration of Camel Kafka connector running in, uh, in standalone mode. Uh, it's basically the same thing as I showed on the first uh, video, but this time running through the Camel Kafka connector. So, we have, as I said, the idea is that you basically configure the integration uh, in one configuration file and you feed that to the Kafka runtime. The configuration file, if you look at it, it basically has two big segments. Uh, the first one, it's used to configure the connector, the connector specific things. Uh, what is the, the, its name, how many tasks, uh, connector class, and the, and the converters for what uh, we explained a little bit earlier. Uh, the second segment on the configuration uh, is basically what is used to configure the integration itself. It points to uh, what are the endpoints that you are going to use, what are the components that uh, will be used for the integration, and of course some component specific configuration when that is needed, which is the case for the uh, simple GMS2 component uh, that we needed to configure the connection factory and the remote uh, URI for the broker. One additional configuration that uh, might be, is needed is also with regards to the boot, uh, bootstrap servers. This points to the uh, Kafka instance that you are uh, reaching to. Again, with the environment in a similar, uh, similar fashion as the one before, we can run it through the, through the GMS broker and send some message to simulate the traffic. Pretty much the same thing as before is going to happen. Some, once we add the message to the Artemis console simulating the traffic, this will be consumed by this time, however this time, by the Camel Kafka connector instance and the message will be displayed on the, on the uh, screen. Basically adding the contents and hitting the send for the message. And we should have the message here. Now, uh, as you could see, it is significantly uh, simpler, I would say, to get started. Uh, with integrations in this format, especially if your expertise is on Kafka and you are already, uh, already ex I would say, expertized uh, with Kafka. So this makes it quite easy to get started. However, as a simple solution, uh, this would probably not even be enough, and that's where comes the demo from Jakub. So just give us a minute to switch to laptops. Right, so uh, what I will show now is uh, how you can run this whole thing on uh, OpenShift or to work also on Kubernetes, but I'm using OpenShift 4 in AWS. Uh, I will try to do it live so maybe we'll have some fun uh, 
if you run into some issues. Uh, and I will use for it a project called Streamsy, which is something that I'm working on. It's a project which is part of Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And it's an uh, operator or set of operators for running Kafka on uh, Kubernetes. So uh, I actually have already my Kafka cluster deployed. You can see the Zookeeper pods, the Kafka pods, and so on. So that's already ready because that takes a few minutes always, so I saved some time. But uh, I didn't deploy yet the Kafka Connect. So uh, to deploy Kafka Connect with the operator, we need to here do several things. So I will create some uh, Kafka topics, which uh, I will be using later by the connectors. So this is some topic called Telegram topic, uh, some topic called S3 topic. Might give you an idea what I will be showing later. I also create a user, so this demo is using uh, authentication and authorization and so on. So I need to create a user which will be used by the Kafka Connect to connect to the Kafka cluster. And last but not least, uh, I create the Kafka Connect deployment uh, as well. And this will be the distributed Kafka Connect deployment. All to, to be honest, the cluster is not that big, so uh, I'm actually running just one worker node. Uh, and I will anyway not run uh, that many tasks to actually need more, but it's the distributed deployment. And uh, because I will be using things like AWS, and I don't really want someone to start mining uh, Bitcoins on my AWS account in five minutes, then uh, I will use secrets to uh, kind of push the credentials for AWS and the API keys for Telegram into the Kafka Connect connectors. So uh, what I need to specify here is uh, to mount uh, two secrets with the credentials and uh, uh, I will later use them to configure the connectors. So. To deploy all of this, all I need to do is kubectl uh, apply. And uh, the connect always needs uh, some time to start and to pull the image. So in the meantime, we can have a look at uh, how we will deploy the connector itself. So. We again use the operator pattern to deploy them. Uh, if you would run it uh, outside of Streamsy or somewhere on VMs and so on, there's a REST API which you can use. The JSON which you would put uh, into the REST API interface looks uh, very similar to this. It will be basically the, the spec section uh, of the custom resource uh, mostly copies the REST interface. And uh, what I'm doing here is uh, I say, okay, I want to use the camel source connector. So uh, that's the source connector, which is based on Apache Camel. I want to run only one task of this. That's here. And then I need to specify the key and value converters. So to make it a bit easier for us to see what we are sending, I will just use the string converters to get it as strings. Then I need to specify the topic where the messages will be sent. So in this case, we will connect to Telegram. If you know that, that's this uh, messaging or instant messaging application. So we will read messages from it from some bot and then we will push them into some Kafka topic. And then this is very important part, uh, the KMOS source uh, URL, which uh, is basically how we tell the KMOS source connector that we want to use the Telegram component. And then uh, this part is really just uh, taking the API key for Telegram from uh, the secret and using it in the configuration of the connector. So let's uh, check if the connect pod is already running. And we can see that it's there and it's ready. So I can just do OC apply on the connector file. That will create the connector inside the Kafka Connect. And I can just check uh, the status of the connector. So when I scroll down, I should be able to see here that uh, the task is running. 
The connector says uh, unassigned, it always takes a few seconds to change, but the task is already running, which is important. And uh, let's go to another window and open uh, a consumer inside the OpenShift cluster, which would connect to Kafka and read the messages. And now uh, I can simply switch uh, into the Telegram web console, where I have uh, everyone there can create these bots. So I have created one of these, and uh, we can send here some uh, message. And when I switch back to the terminal, we should be able to see. So here we can see the incoming message. And you can see here the hello world text. If you have Telegram in your application, you can try it and send some messages. But please don't try any of those lines because you would kill the cluster probably. <laughs> so uh, that works. We can try uh, another message uh, just to make sure it really works. So let's try it in check. And we should again see delivered. Yes, here it is. So. We have the messages from Telegram in uh, Kafka now. Now uh, we should do some super sophisticated processing, right? We should have some AI which would do some customer support or something like that. I'm not really gonna do that. I will pretend that someone that did that and uh, I will now just take the messages. Oh, and I can see now someone is sending something. So I can just take the messages and let's say I'm using some AI service from Amazon AWS, so I want to dump them into Amazon uh, AWS SQSQ. So I can just take another connector. And if you look at the configuration, it looks very similar. The only difference is that uh, this time it is come a sync connector. So we will take the data from Kafka and push them somewhere else. And uh, the source of the messages will be the same topic where we push the messages from the Telegram. And uh, here in the URL, we specify uh, that we want to push them into uh, Amazon SQSQ, which is called MyQ. And here again, from the secret, I load all the things like the credentials for AWS and so on. So let's do... OC apply and we can again uh, just double check the status we can see that it got quickly to running and here I have the AWS console you can see that I have the queue already existing here and uh, I have already a bunch of messages there, so yeah, let's start polling for the messages. So we have six of them. Let's delete them without reading because they were anyway all just test messages. And let's try to send something new. So let's send uh, hello SQS. And we can see it uh, already here. Uh, Hello SQS, so we received it in the SQS queue. So uh, you can really easily use the power of Apache Camel to power these uh, connectors and use just the connector operator and Kafka Connect to integrate things very easily. Uh, to show you a bit more about some of the <coughs> challenges, I want to show one more connector and this time it's for Amazon uh, AWS S3 storage. So. Uh, Let's look at the configuration. It looks really similar to the SQS one. And I want you to notice one thing. So here we are using, again, these uh, string converters. So we want to load the files from AWS S3, and we want to send them into the Kafka topic as uh, strings. So let's create it. And let's go back to the browser, or let's first show you
This is the kind of sample file which I will try to upload into S3. And let's see how we receive it. Let's uh, kill this Telegram connector and let's uh, start uh, another client which will read the messages from a separate topic which will be used for the S3 files. So that is ready now and I can go to the browser and I can upload the file. So upload sample one, upload and we can see that the file is there and when I refresh then uh, the file disappears because right now the connector is created to delete the files from the S3 storage after they are uh, uh, pushed into the Kafka topic. But then we look uh, into the console. We can see that what we got is this, right? So uh, probably got some uh, S3 object input stream object. So it's nice that we know the class name. It's nice that we know some uh, ID or hash or whatever that is, but it's not entirely useful, I guess, at least not for me. So what can we do about it is uh, we can try to fix the connector by specifying the right uh, converter. So here we say the value converter should not be anymore this uh, string converter which is shipped with Kafka Connect by default, but we want to use this org Apache Hamel Kafka Connector Converters S3 Object Converter. So let's uh, apply this change. Let's uh, Make sure that the update was propagated. We can see that it is uh, running and we can see that it's generation two. So uh, let's try to upload another file, which is again a very sophisticated test fi uh, text file. So upload sample two, let's upload it and uh, it should disappear again. Okay, disappeared. And let's go here and we can see now we got the right text, the second sample file for uh, S3 upload. So uh, that kind of shows that uh, while in theory it's super easy to kind of take whatever camera URL or component you have and use it in the Kafka Connect, you kind of need to be very careful and make sure you have the right converters and you are able to convert the messages. Otherwise, uh, you might get this instead of this and uh, the connector would be kind of uh, useless. So, uh, and that's also one of the things which is uh, kind of still work in progress and why on the beginning we decided to focus on few selected connectors to make sure that we kind of uh, figure out what's the best way how to do these converters and how to make sure that these things are working. Okay, so back to the slides. So uh, I hope that uh, you liked it, what you saw because uh, we are quite uh, happy and excited about uh, this project. It uh, combines the features of two very great uh, Apache Software Foundation projects and uh, as a kind of guy who is more on the Kafka side, it's amazing for me because it opens the doors for many new connectors for Kafka and many new integrations. And it also brings kind of this uh, stability and maturity and experience of the Camel project into this connector world. So uh, if you work with Kafka Connect, you know that there's a lot of great professional connectors supported by companies. But there's also a lot of connectors who someone wrote two years ago, put them on GitHub. They uh, worked at that time, nobody maintains them, they don't work anymore, or it's tricky to get them working and so on. And uh, in Apache Camel, we have 300 or something like that components, connectors, 
which are there, they are ready to use, and the community has a huge experience with uh, maintaining them and keeping them working. And uh, on the other hand, what kind of, I think, uh, Kafka Connect brings into the game is a bit more of the simplicity and distributed nature which the Kafka Connect can offer. And for a lot of people, especially already using Kafka Connect, the way how they can run these connectors in Kafka Connect is uh, kind of easier and better than to, for example, write their own Java code uh, for the common integrations uh, on their own. So it's kind of, uh, as a Kafka user, you can get a lot of new options. And uh, as a common user, you can also get kind of this jump start into the Kafka world because you get the first class Kafka Connect uh, integration. So that's it for this talk. Uh, we wanted to mention one more thing. We are hiring and we are not really saying uh, it here just as a Red Hat in general, but we have some open positions in the teams working on these things. So if anyone would be interested, you should definitely get in touch uh, with us after the talk. So that's it. And if you have any questions, now's the right time to ask. Yeah? Is the demo code available somewhere? Uh, I can make the demo code on, uh, on OpenShift available. I can add the link to the slides and to the talk on the DEF CON uh, page. Yeah. Uh, can you do the same for yours? Yeah, the, the, demo, the code for the videos are also available. Uh, I can make it available on the same place. Yeah. So actually, yeah, this is where you should be able to find the slides. <laughs> And if you give us till the evening or till tomorrow, we will add the links for the code and uh, so on. And again, you should be able to find the slides on the DevConf page as well, of course. Any other questions? Then uh, I guess thanks for coming uh, and staying here for so long. I think this is the uh, end of today. So uh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.